Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Happy Saturday, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. Anyways, y'all, looks like some drama it might be brewing with The Breakfast Club. So if you guys don't know, Angela Yee uh, went on to the Tamron Hall show yesterday. And um, I ended up watching the full episode. I thought it was pretty interesting. But a particular segment from that episode is making its rounds around social media. And so in this particular snippet, Angela Yee talks about how it was very hard for her being the only woman on The Breakfast Club and how she was always being held accountable for what the guys said. And then she also said that there were no women producers, camera people, that she was literally the only woman there. So this clip went viral and a lot of people are not feeling it. So I want you all to go ahead and take a look at this and I will come back with the rest of my commentary. You know what, I'll ask you about it because a part of, that will always be a part of your legacy. And one of the things I was always struck by was the fact that you were the lone woman. Mm -hmm. And whenever there was a controversy with Charlemagne or DJ Envy, there were people who held you accountable in their minds for their actions. Um, there was the interview with uh, Lil Mama, a rapper, Angel uh, Azalea Banks, an entertainer, and Monique that mm -hmm. come to mind where people felt that Charlemagne was being misogynistic in his tone and that you should have somehow uh, wrangled him in. I, I firmly disagree with that because you're not there to police them. You, but people held you accountable for things that the guys, as they wrote in one article, did. Right. How did that make you feel? And I wasn't even there when they interviewed yeah. Azalea Banks. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? But I also feel like, you know, sometimes I, feel, I would feel like I got it harder than he did for something that he said. And so I also want to make it clear that we're all three individuals. Yeah. You say what you say, feel how you feel, and I do too. But it's hard because people affiliate you with the whole group. Yeah. And that was part of what it, why I really wanted to have my own show, because now what happens, I'm accountable for that. Yeah. But when you have three people with three differing opinions or three different viewpoints and completely different personalities, we're all individuals, but sometimes it's hard for people to separate that. I want to go back to the woman part of it, because mm -hmm. you did hit on something, because you were the lone woman on this show with a lot of bravado, with a lot of edge, disruptive, and that's why millions of people love the show. It seemed to me that people were always riding you. Yeah, and you know, I was the only woman who worked there too. I mean, when it came to producers, camera people, and it wasn't an easy room for me to be I didn't know in. that. So I feel like I did need more like backup, you know, because even things that I felt, as a woman, it is, you know, if somebody can't understand your point of view because they're not coming from where you come from. And so that was hard for me, too, to be the only woman there with nobody to be like, check somebody, you know, you shouldn't have said that like that. It's just me. And there were times I did do that behind the scenes because you know, we should be able to do that. That's part of what it is. I'm not always going to agree. But it's hard when nobody's like, you know what, she's right. Or let's all have a conversation about this. It's just kind of like you say what you say and then... Did you find yourself fighting for respect from the co-host, who I know respect you, mm -hmm. but when you're the only woman in the room and, which blew me away just now, you're saying even in the production part of it. Yeah. You're there. It was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So what was very interesting is that after The Shade Room posted it, DJ Envy comes into the comment section and he writes this. Cap emoji, there are plenty of women that work behind the scenes on the at Breakfast Club AM. Then he comes back 10 minutes later and then he writes, Cap, that's just not true. Dot, 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 dot. So obviously, okay, Mr. DJ Envy is definitely in his beige rage, honey. He's definitely feeling away. But now what's even crazier is that little mama, if you guys remember years ago, little mama was on the show and Charlamagne made her cry. And so little mama came on and she said this, oh, please, she's up there playing file games too. She helped make multiple women of color, especially feel like the only women in that room numerous times. Rock throwing hand-hiding bitch. 
laughing face emoji, laughing face emoji, laughing face emoji. So little mama was not here for, you know, the throwing rocks and hiding the hands. She was not feeling it. So for me, I was very curious as to what has Angela Yee been up to since she's left the Breakfast Club? Because a lot of people thought it was going to be the death of the Breakfast Club. But I'm really, I don't watch them anymore. But I do watch certain clips when they go viral. And I know they've been bringing in different, you know, co-hosts, like different women. They've been rotating. And I think it's good. It makes the show seem more fresh. They had Jess Hilarious on there. They had NeNe Leakes. They've had plenty of women come in to kind of fill that role. And I kind of like what they're doing. It's kind of revamping it. So like I said, when those clips go viral, I watched them. I know Angela Yee left this year, but I haven't really followed up with her. I, you know, I haven't heard anybody talk about her new show. I didn't think the new show was even on until she went on to the Tamron Hall show. So I decided to go on Twitter and see, you know, well, what's the tea? What are people saying about the show? And apparently I don't see a lot of fanfare behind Way Up with Angela Yee. They only have about a thousand followers and not verified. Um... You know, here goes her introduction. I want y'all to go ahead and watch this. It's Angela Yee, and welcome to Way Up with Angela Yee. Listen, that feels so crazy to say that, but, you know, this is going to be my new page. I'm excited for my new show. It's going to be starting in the fall of this year. We don't have an exact date, but I'm just excited to come to a market near you. I've already been planning some really fun, exciting segments, thinking about who I want to have on the show. And listen, if y'all have any ideas, you can definitely drop them in here because these are the planning stages and I've been in these sessions for hours and hours and days and days and we still have a long way to go. But All right, so you guys just watched the introduction. But one thing that I find very interesting is I'm scrolling the page. There's not a lot of hearts, um, you know, three likes, no retweets, um, one like here, no comment, no retweet. There's not a lot of engagement. Now, she recently interviewed Larsa Pippen because Larsa Pippen's on some hobo tour. Um, but, yeah, there's really no likes. There's no comments. There's no retweets. So it looks like, and I haven't heard anybody say anything about this show, and, and that's no shade. I haven't heard this show being talked about on the blogs, you know, my personal friends. I just haven't heard anybody say anything concerning her show. So, you know, I'm wondering if the shade that was being thrown, and I don't think it was like horrible shade, but I'm wondering if like some of the stuff that was being thrown was said to cause controversy because in that same interview, she, you know, there's clearly women who work at the Breakfast Club, you know, high up, and it was a woman who helped Angela Yee get her own show. So for her to say that there's no women there, I do believe DJ Envy because I know for a fact there are women who do work at the Breakfast Club and who are in high positions. So I found that very interesting. Now, as far as what little mama is saying, I do agree with her that Angela Yee definitely played um, a lot of games when it came to like the interviews. Now, I will say this. I think the breakdown of the Breakfast Club happened three years ago with the whole Gucci Man interview. When Charlemagne went to go interview Gucci Man on his own, a lot of people suspected at that point Charlemagne would be doing his own thing, getting his own show. And remember, Gucci Man really went in on Angela Yee and DJ Envy, you know, calling them out their name. And Charlemagne really didn't, you know, rebuttal. Um, he didn't take up for his coworkers as he should have. And that caused a really big issue for Angela Yee and Charlemagne. They even, well, he she ended up unfollowing him. It was that bad. So y'all go ahead and check this clip out really quick. People are gonna see this and be like, he must be banned, because why they not in the, uh, Man, <laughs> why they not in the studio? But for the record, he's not banned. I don't even know where that came from. It came from that punk ass bitch, man. And DJ Envy, he's a pussy too. Envy did it too? Envy's pussy, man, pussy. He was scared, to, wasn't even scared to come. You know he's scared. Where he at? I didn't know he was supposed to be here. He wasn't gonna come. He wasn't going to come because the day they did that people's court thing and you wasn't there, mm -hmm. he was there. Him and uh, the girl, whatever. So he ain't had the nuts to come after he did that. I knew. It. I was going to confront him, too. All right. So you guys just saw that clip. Now, I will say this. I don't think it's fair to put what men do on women. I don't think it's a woman's job to corral grown men back. It's not her job to play their mother, and you shouldn't say that. And you, These are grown men. Whatever comes out their mouth, they're responsible for. You know, I remember during the whole Will Smith slap, 
a lot of people felt like, well, Jada should have got up there. She should have got her man. You know, while maybe she should have talked to him when she felt like he was getting ready to go up there. Like, no, just chill, chill. But, you know, if he chose to go up there and go slap another grown man, that is on Will Smith. Would it have been nice if she'd been like, no, honey, it's not that serious. We can deal with it another time. Okay, cool. But if she chose not to do that, that's fine, too. That is on Will Smith. And I don't like this mentality. Like, every time a man does something, somehow it falls back on a woman and that a grown woman is responsible for the actions and the words that come out of Charlemagne or DJ Envy's mouth. Because when... She has opinions on stuff. Nobody says, well, why didn't Charlemagne and DJ Envy say anything? Nobody would say that. So why is she responsible for the words that or the actions that they portray on that show? And let's keep it real. With political correctness, that show has toned all the way down. And I think, you know, it's kind of disingenuous to go back to clips from 10 years ago. Because 10 years ago on social media was a totally different place. And to now use that against her. Because there's a lot of things that you could say and do. Was it distasteful? Was it misogynistic? Of course. But there was a lot of leeway back then that the things that he did 10 years ago, his antics, he would never be able to get away with now. Hence why a lot of people say that the show is boring, it's dry, you know, they're not keeping it as real, they're walking on eggshells. Because again, we live in a culture where everybody's offended by everything. But I will say this, to me... Um, a lot of her silence also came off as low-key acceptance. Like, I may not really agree with them, but I'm not going to say anything. It is what it is. So I can see how some women definitely feel away. And she did used to instigate some stuff on the show. And I will even say, too, that the whole Little Mama situation was really sad, you know, to watch her cry. It just, it was not that serious. And, you know, Charlemagne kept digging and digging at her. Name for you is the voice of the young struggle face. What? It's because you're young, but you have an old face. Like how Drake says, you know, I'm really too young to be looking this old. Well, it's like, you know, you, Greg Oden, and LeBron James have the same gene. Like y'all young with old faces. Like you might have Benjamin Button syndrome. You probably start looking yeah, younger as you get older. Yeah, y'all gotta see Charlemagne's face. Seriously. <laughs> Jay Z was like, "Who's this young man trying to get on stage?" They text me. Yo, I've been waiting for us to do a track for a minute, so I'm like, Snoop gets you know, high. Yeah, Snoop gets high. So he probably so, was just so talking out his ass. Really, that, are are the rumors true about uh, Keisha Cole shooting a biopic and you're gonna play a young Frankie? You know what? I saw your little um video. <laughs> Ooh, see boy, what I'm saying? Boy, stop. <laughs> Long time. People know you for playing yourself, walking up on stage with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. Charlamagne, seriously. From. That's cut the this truth. Out. Cut this out. Could y'all please help me Can out? Can he cut this out? I'm just hating. <laughs> Chill out, Jurassic Park, Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex, prehistoric yeah, face. Nah, I feel you. Um, when I was 17 years old, I put out an album while my mother was dying <clears throat> of cancer. That right there alone is a struggle. That's hard. Man. That Little Mama episode never sat well with me, as with a lot of people. But then again, this was years ago where that was acceptable behavior on radio. You know, even back when Wendy Williams was popping on radio, it was a, a huge lack of respect for the guest. And, and they treated celebrities like they weren't even human. But I think Little Mama held her own, you know. And she's been the same person Outside of her jumping on stage with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys, I remember people drug her for months about that. And even looking back on that, who gives a fuck? Who, who is Jay-Z and Alicia Keys? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she just got excited. That's what young people do. They get excited. You know, maybe she looked back on it, she wouldn't have did it. But she caught a lot of flack for that. She really did. And I think since then, she's done good things. She's acting. She's been on reality television off and on. So Little Mama will be all right. But I definitely understand her still being hurt and being frustrated. Because in that interview, you know, Angela Yee wasn't really helping her out, wasn't giving her a way out. Even when she was saying, like, hey, you know, like, can we stop? Can you stop clowning me? It's like nobody was coming to her defense and saying, okay, Charlemagne, chill. Okay, cool. We, we got it. You, you got the jokes. It started to just be straight bullying. But one person did take it for little mama and respect to Beanie Siegel. You know what I'm saying? Because he checked Charlemagne to his face and Charlemagne, you know, didn't have that same energy with Beanie. You sit here and you abash a little girl, little mama till she cried. That's what you do. Coward. Well, nigga. We talk, me and you talking to each other now. I tell you yeah. that I think, I think you're a hypocrite. You can think what you want. Then. And I think you'd be coming off as, as a hater sometimes. Mm. You can think what you want, thing. 
So now, what, what's what's next? With, with I can say, I say, I think you're a bitch. You let Fred Joe Star and them check you, but you made that little girl cry. They make her cry. But yes, you did. Good. I should do that. So, you know, you have had people come on the Breakfast Club and hold their own. I remember when they got into a Birdman and things like that. And again, at the end of the day, it is for the individual to come up there and decide how they want to be portrayed and the things that they're going to say and how they're going to hold their own. Little Mama was young, and I think, you know, she was going through a lot, and the constant berating got to her, so she kind of broke. But Miss Monique held her own. Like, Miss Monique handled her business against Charlemagne. Now you want to play a tit for tat, and what you're saying is a black woman's resume don't matter. And we have to say what's right and what's fair. And then a brother that looks like me, from South Carolina, says you're the donkey of the day. You have to explain that to our community. I've, I've explained it. I said that I think that you're using racial and gender bias which are actual real issues the struggle that the black woman is going through in many industries is a real issue but you're using it to focus on something that you're dealing with individually and when the queens of comedy was on tour see we made history and i don't know if you've done your homework because we were the only female group black white latin asian to sell out consecutively around this country mm -hmm. but you'll disregard that should you have gotten more than five hundred thousand? yes and i've said that from okay. day one well, here's what but I'll that's say, what we're saying, though. Well, that, No, that's not what y'all was saying. Know, what y'all was saying was y'all should have got the same amount you know that what? Chris Rock, Chappelle, and Amy Schumer me, got. Let me, let me answer that. Let me answer that, Daddy. What I said was, if I'm considered a legend, like my brothers, then why wouldn't I get what legends get? I'm still trying to get you and Brother Sydney to justify why you think you deserve $13 million. Was there a bidding war between platforms? Well, when you say I want to know something. Was when, there you other say, when you say justify, I'm going to put my resume on the table. I don't have to justify it. You can see. So there are people that say that you didn't treat people well. Yes. And that they've had issues working with you and that you're difficult. Yes. That's mm -hmm. a great question. You know the guy Harvey Weinstein? Mm-hmm. And he was able to do that for how many years? Decades. And why do you think that was? Do you think this is a unique situation? Do you think that people are fearful to speak out when they're mistreated? It's a difference between mistreatment and sexual assault, Monique. Like so again, I don't think it's fair to put all of that on Angela Yee because Charlamagne is a grown man who's responsible for his own actions. I think the whole situation with Monique, I think Monique handled her shit. To me, it, it was tit for tat. Charlamagne was saying some things. He wasn't, he wasn't as respectful. But Monique handled her shit as a grown woman, and that's just what it is. When people are bantering with you and saying little slick shit, that's your job to defend yourself. You know what I'm saying? And I think as a grown woman, Monique handled Charlamagne and put him in his place like a mother in the correct way. She didn't call him out his name. You know, she just basically stated her point. They didn't get along. She ended up leaving. It is what it is. But I feel like a lot of times Angela Yee gets heat because she's an easy target. See, a lot of people, well, I would say the old Charlemagne. A lot of people are kind of scared to go against the old Charlemagne. You know, now he's all about peace and namasta. <laughs> you know, he's changed a lot. And they didn't want to get drugged. They didn't want to, you know, get clowned. They didn't want to get roasted. So... It's easy to project those feelings onto Angela Yee because Angela Yee is not a confrontational person at all. And even with the Kay Michelle situation, when Kay was mad at her and saying, well, you're a woman and this, this and that. And how dare you let these men come on here and talk about my funky box? People have been talking about Kay Michelle's cooch for years before these dudes ever came on The Breakfast Club. Would have been nice for Angela Yee to step up and say, hey, y'all, that's not cool or let's chill. Yeah, that would have been nice. But let's also not act like Kay Michelle has not herself tore down other women. I always find it interesting when women want the same grace that they're unwilling to give other women. How many women have Kay Michelle put hands on, threw water on, hit in the face with flowers, talked about other women's looks and other women's bodies, even got into it with a blogger and was talking about her, her body and her vagina. So it's like Kay Michelle can dish it, but then she can't take it. But taking your ass home because I don't want to get slapped on my fucking forehead with that wop satin ass pussy. With that But now it's Angela Yee's job to cape for K. Michelle. No, the type of energy that you want, 
You need to put that type of energy out there. If you're worth somebody feeling like you're a cool person and, you know, you treat others with respect, people are going to be more likely to go to bat for you and have your back. But if you're just as disrespectful and wild, you know what I'm saying, and you have no respect for other women, then you can't then expect a woman that you don't even have a, a personal relationship with to fly off the handles for you. And that's just being realistic because I keep seeing people bringing up K. Michelle. But to me, they don't have a personal relationship. That's not her home, girl. Would it have been nice for her to check those guys? Yeah, possibly would have been nice, but that's not her obligation. Why are they not holding the men accountable as opposed to holding her more accountable? These men are the one out here clowning her and, and talking about her box. And they've been doing that for years. And even as recently as two years ago, uh, Mano was still talking about her box and K. Michelle was talking about suing him. You know what I'm saying? So why, where's all the smoke for Mano? Who's been perpetuating the situation for years? It's like there's more smoke for Angela than Mano. Like I've always said, I don't feel like there's a lot of camaraderie, especially amongst women. There's like, you know, the meaning is a spirit of friendship and community. And to be honest, you just don't get that with a lot of women. Um, hell, even people were making comments in my comment section saying, how many things has Angela Yee on her morning when she's doing the morning you know, gossip has she taken directly from my channel and never credited me. Remember when I got that exclusive, when Cardi B and Offset were divorcing, there were 20,000 people in my live stream and there were so many outlets there that were watching and taking notes, literally quoted my words verbatim. And all of these black outlets, including Angela Yee, did she say lovely tea? Did she give me any props, any credit? No, she said a source close to Cardi B. They all said a source close to Cardi B. So most of these, the, the media outlets, they're, they're very cliquish and they're full of shit. And I just, you know, that was very disrespectful because then in the same breath, she had no problem when Jeffree Star was going through his stuff and, you know, gossiping and, and you know, running his mouth about Kanye. She had no problem mentioning YouTuber Jeffree Star. So, again... People want this lifeline and this grace that they're not willing to give other people. So I don't feel bad that she's getting drugged and DJ Envy's calling her out and Little Mama's calling her out because she's done the same thing in the industry, you know, shading other women and stuff like that. But, you know, at this point, like I said on Instagram, I don't expect too much from anybody. You know, all of these media outlets click up. You know, they, they fool with who they want to fool with and they see people as competition. There's some underlying tensions there between her and DJ Envy. Even before she left the show, remember, they really got into it about that Selling Sunset show. And DJ Envy felt the way, and he was not letting it go. They were going back and forth for like a good five minutes, and Charlamagne was sitting there instigating really bad. There might be some more underlying issues between DJ Envy and Angela Yee, you know, because technically he didn't have to say anything. He could have just let her get her role on, say what she wanted to say, and kept it pushing. But the fact that he felt the need to comment in the shade room and now it's a story makes me feel like there's some other things going on behind the scenes. And maybe ever since she left, they're not as close. And it's clearly apparent that her show, to me, it doesn't seem to be flourishing as much as I would have thought, because I was really surprised at the lack of engagement on social media. Like I said, I haven't heard too much of her show. I'm sure it may be a decent show. I haven't personally watched it because I haven't heard anything about it to make me interested in, in checking it out. But, you know, maybe I will after this just to get a synopsis of what she talks about on the show and what the show is about. But, yeah, so the whole situation is interesting, honey. The girls are fighting. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all this drama concerning ex-Breakfast Club member Angela Yee, DJ Envy chiming in, and Little Mama also saying her piece as well. How do y'all feel about the situation? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Make sure you still subscribe to the channel, honey, because there's steadily unsubscribing people. Uh, feel free to share the video. Don't forget to hit the like button. And I'll talk to y'all later. Enjoy your weekend. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.